वेलकम एवरीबडी वेलकम बैक टू दिस समरी सीरीज विच इज एक्चुअली गोइंग टू हेल्प यू टू गेन द बेस्ट मार्क्स इन योर बोर्ड एग्जामिनेशन विच आर जस्ट गोइंग टू कम वेरी सोन सो आई वेलकम यू बैक अगेन इन दिस सीरीज माई नेम इज डॉक्टर लक्ष्य कथूरिया एंड आई एम योर केमिस्ट्री एक्सपर्ट ओके गाइज बिफोर वी बिगिन द सेशन फॉर टूडे विच हुज नेम इज केमिकल काइनेटिक्स सो आई एज आई जस्ट सेट लेट मी क्विकली टेल यू who your teacher is so that we two are well connected with each other and uh, you can go through these uh, uh, session notes also very nicely i have prepared these uh, session notes in such a fashion that you need no, not make anything else you just have to brush up your ncert concept with the help of these uh, slides made okay and uh, also you can just take out the print of these uh, or if you wish you can write down the things according to your convince and then uh, take ncert on the side and take the notes on the side and then just to verify if everything is done just go through these slides every single thing is covered maybe something more it will be not just useful for your uh, board examination but it will be helpful for your neat as well as je mains examination okay so my name is dr lakshya kathuria i studied from iit delhi and then i did my phd from indian institute of science bangalore and uh, my air when i appeared for je examination was 787 and then i did my phd post that i have done my uh, i taught students at uh, iit guwahati for chemical engineering first year students also post that i have been professionally teaching students for j mains and neat examination so i welcome you all for this amazing platform of pw let's begin our session everybody okay what is chemical kinetic mean every single thing we are going to cover in a very lucid fashion very straightforward simple language even if you have not studied this chapter for a very long time suppose you have been brushing up all the other concept of uh, chemistry but thinking of keeping this chapter on hold for some time you need not worry at all so first of all i will help you in understanding what does kinetic itself mean why do we actually need to study this chapter and then we will be deriving some rate law expressions and will think uh, check out what is rate as well as what is order of the reaction understood okay and integrated rate law we will be integrating because some informations are lost when we derive rate law expression some informations are not covered and therefore we need need to go to uh, integrated rate law finally we will see that how does temperature affect the rate of a reaction and finally the collision theory which is the latest theory the updated theory which helps us in understanding chemical kinetics to the best of the end, our level my question to you everybody i want an en engagement huh i want an engagement if you know the answer to something before i speak answer to that question i would like you to just pause the video pause your answer in the comment box and then just verify if you what what you were thinking and what i am telling you if they are syncing if they are matching right that kind of feeling once you figure out all oh, the things what you thought and what thing i am going to present to you if they are same it will be of immense pleasure okay my first question what does kinetics mean i am sure that you might have seen uh, a tvs branded uh, motorcycle or uh, the scooty for example two wheeler there was a two wheeler by the name kinetics what is kinetic mean most of the uh, two wheelers or four wheelers they have names on some sort of synonyms of speed speed for example swift swift also means quick very fast tej likewise there is something called kinetics kinetics also has to deal with speed so this entire chapter is going to answer to you whether a reaction is a fast reaction or it's a slow reaction or moderate speed reaction basically i word use speed of a reaction let's start with our very first topic that what does a chemist think what does a chemist think when you go to the laboratory i have done several years of laboratory exercises before you do any experiment you will think of is this reaction feasible or not the best way is to discuss is thermodynamic properties feasibility has to be dealt with thermodynamic so let me tell you thermodynamic is the 
topic is the branch of science is the branch of chemistry which helps us in understanding whether a reaction will be feasible or not feasible means is it a yes or is it a no if a reaction is really possible or not possible or not so thermodynamic helps us in answering that question then we know extent of a chemical reaction suppose i start doing an experiment in the laboratory and i now i am making very myself very sure that this reaction is going to occur but how much of it will occur what will be the percentage yield of that reaction how much of it going to be a forward in the forward direction will it be in equilibrium all sort of questions will be answered in a reaction in a chapter called chemical equilibrium chemical equilibrium whether the reaction is really possible or not you might be worried sir why equilibrium is not that that a and b when they are interconverting they are changing into each other for the forward direction reaction a is reactant for the backward reaction b is the reactant understood so one single reaction has a a reactant as well as product so for forward a is the reactant for backward b is the reactant for forward b is the product and for the backward a is the product now so reactant becomes the product product becomes the reactant okay now it is not always necessary that the extent of the reaction in the forward and the backward they are always the same rate has to be the same rate of forward direction reaction has to be equals to rate of backward direction reaction to be called this reaction at equilibrium now the reaction equilibrium can be in one particular direction dominated in one direction this is how it is represented what does it mean that the reaction is favored in the forward direction b will be produced a will be spent a lot right a is since a is the reactant overall a seems to be less favored so a would be present in the least amount or less amount compared to the other one that's b if you write it in the other way for example if you write a in small equilibrium but it is favored in the backward side reaction it's a favored in backward side so a will be produced in more amount which means if i start with a it does not produce much of b it is just to almost a is present in the reaction medium b is not formed so which all these things all these things are answered in this chapter that's chemical equilibrium i am very sure it is clear to you what do we study in thermodynamic we study the feasibility of a reaction and in chemical equilibrium we study how much of the reaction is going to proceed in the forward or in the backward direction what will be the percentage yield what will be the concentration of a and b at equilibrium what will be the temperature what will be the pressure all sort of measurable quantities during this particular chapter we study okay then finally how quick the reaction is is it a slow reaction is it a fast reaction or is it of moderate rate reaction moderate right so that answer comes to you from the chapter which is of today's agenda chemical kinetics chemical kinetics kinetics means speed how fast or how slow the reaction is is the division clear everybody see chemistry is such a beautiful subject why be why we people are afraid of chemistry because we do not study we do not understand the significance of one particular chapter why are we understand why do we need to study thermodynamic at all why do we need to study thermodynamic in physics also all sort of questions should be clear in your head otherwise it will all become khichdi then what is the significance of this chapter what is the significance of chemical kinetics for example if you know the answer if you know the significance of the chapter itself half of the chapter is done rest is the theory connected to that title itself another questions connected to the theory once you understand the chapter then you understand what is the theory going to come inside and once you understand the theory you will be able to solve questions also make sense let's go ahead now i as i said there are going to be three reactions three kind of reactions by the way one will be very fast reaction or fast reaction the other one will be very slow reaction and then the third one is moderate speed reaction three kind of reactions that we study what does speed mean if i ask you speed you will answer that so speed is the distance covered 
इन ए गिवन टाइम करेक्ट डिस्टेंस डिवाइड बाई टाइम इन केमिस्ट्री फॉर अ केमिकल रिएक्शन the speed of a reaction we cannot say that how much distance a reaction has covered what we will say the change in the distance or the distance covered initially and the final one initial time and the final time that difference so instead of saying that speed is defined which is having another name rate rate is the change of something with respect to time what we are going to tag in this chapter rate as equals to change in the concentration change in concentration delta delta of something let's say x divide by delta of t is this representation clear everybody what is speed what is rate rate and speed they are interchangeably used in this chapter so you need not worry when to use speed when to use rate they are almost the same thing that x means x could be anything and in this chapter we'll take x is equals to concentration and in mole concept chapter also in solution and colligative property we have learned about concentration terms the very first and the most important concentration term is molarity very commonly used in laboratories so we are going to use this as molarity sometimes you will study that we will be dealing in the terms of pressure also because the reactants and the products may be gases understood everybody what are concentrations here concentration terms x can be molarity x can be pressure or we can also deal in the terms of number of moles we can deal in the terms of mole we can also deal in the terms of mass everything depending upon the questions input questions ka uh, what are the data given to you so based on that you will be deciding should it be delta of x divided by delta of t with respect to time always denominator will be just the time if it is the gas we will be uh, calculating how much drop or increase in the uh, pressure has happened number of moles might also be spent so here we would be needing uh, some basic knowledge of mole concept and then mass clear everyone okay now if i have to represent the change in the concentration let's fix to let us uh, 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 stick ourselves to one particular x thing that's concentration which can be interchangeably used as molarity pressure moles or mass now if i have to draw the graph of very fast reaction suppose this is the concentration and that's my time time is represented on x axis and concentration is represented on y axis so if concentration changes very quickly in course in the course of uh, time in the during the course of the reaction at this particular time the concentration was the concentration let's say it was uh, dropping very quickly see this here at that point of time at when time t is equals to 0 i will be having the maximum concentration of a maximum concentration of my reactant the reaction is a to b or in equilibrium to b let's say a in a equals to a. irreversible or reversible reaction both kind of reaction we study by the way there is no reaction which is irreversible every single reaction is reversible but you can push it to 99.999% completion that reaction still has 0.001% also happening in the backward side so we can say that none of the reactions except the precipitation reaction except the neutralization reaction all those reactions which are chemically just going in the forward direction those reactions here which we are going to study may not go to completion so we, even if you are using irreversible signature irreversible sign here that means the reaction is going to be majorly favored in the forward direction understood everybody okay now the concentration of a that i'm going to use at time t is equals to 0 let's say a that's the max concentration i'll start with 1 kg 2 kg 100 kg 2 mol 3 mol 5 mol 3 molar 3 5 molar something and in the beginning b will be zero correct so as the time is proceeding a will be spent and b will start forming make sense everybody a will start spent right it will be uh, used it will start converting to b and b will be increase in its amount of b will slowly and gradually increase so at that time t is equals to zero if this is the concentration of a this will be the max concentration of a that's equals to how much a value clear 
and as the time is proceeding your time starts from zero let's say this is five minutes this is just five minutes and as the time is just five minutes what is happening the time is very short and the reaction is over within five minutes the reaction seems to be over how do we know the reaction is over the concentration of reactant has become zero so this could be precipitation this could be neutralization reaction very quick maybe five minutes is also too much too large here maybe one minute half a minute maybe a fraction of time so this becomes a fast reaction this is how we represent change in the concentration with respect to time let's come to a very slow reaction you can now judge yourself suppose the concentration in the beginning is this much and over a period of time the concentration does not change much do you see that the, the change in the concentration is not very different in the beginning and at the end clear so let's mark these mark these x and y axis as concentration and time now you can think of moderate speed reactions they would be lying somewhere in between so this is a graph or if you wish or if you wish we will be using this graph let's say let's say the start concentration the start of the concentration the, of the reaction has a concentration here and then it becomes almost same after some time it is no more changing i'll give you a very simple example suppose you and me eh, you can suppose you who are whosoever is watching the channel whosoever watching this session suppose this is you and suppose this is uh, me we both are invited on a party and uh, we are supposed to spend some money to shop uh, to get ourselves ready to buy some clothes to buy perfumes to buy all sort of uh, daily uh, needed things so i just have got my salary you have also got your salary and what i do for just a five minute cup party i spend all my money and i am left with how much zero but you are so smart obviously you are so smart in the beginning you just looked at me how i am spending the money and you also spend the money a lot in the beginning and in the beginning similar amount of money in the time t is equals to zero when you had lots of money you also spent see this the initial part of the graph initial part of the graph is almost similar almost similar now you spend the money but here you realize that your money is going to extinct your money is going to get over your bank balance is now looking like zero but you never like that you don't like that so what you do you start saving that money you start reducing how you were spending the money in the beginning here you were spending the money very quickly huh i was spending the money very quickly here you were spending the money quickly but slowly realize that the money is to be saved also you slowed down the rate of expenditure and once you know that here at this stage my money is still getting expand still getting spent i need to further lower down at at the rate at which i am spending the money and you continue slowing down the rate slowing down the rate slowing down the rate slowing down the rate so this becomes a moderate speed reaction so what we do we just study moderate speed reaction in this entire chapter we do not study we do not study this very fast reaction very fast reaction which is just going to get over you get no time to study those then we are there are very slow reactions so you have to sit down for today and get the data over a period of 20 years 50 years to have a, a single experiment done but moderate speed reaction let's say uh, usually all the organic reactions are of moderate speed reaction 5 hours 6 hours 7 hours 10 hours 15 hours so we study all those organic reactions in this chapter is this distribution or is this a classification of the speed of reaction clear everybody we have slow fast and moderate speed reaction this is how we represent understood Paka. let's move to our agenda for today first of all we are going to learn what is called rate of reaction as i have already discussed with you the change in the concentration with respect to time now i have a graph plotted this picture is taken from your ncrt we will be starting you need to understand the graph first if you understand the graph you understand everything what are the labels x axis has time 
the y axis has concentration of reactants suppose i have reactant a plus reactant b which is changed to or reacting to produce c and d there are two reactants you can start with one reactant you can start with many reactants also as the cons at time is equals to zero at time equals to zero so what's the concentration at time t is equals to zero what's the concentration everybody this is the max concentration of a maximum concentration of let's say i'm starting with i'm plotting the concentration of only one reactant that's a so max concentration of a you can plot b also huh you can plot b also in the same plot you can also do the uh, graphing of b also but let's stick to only one so that we understand the graph completely first so do you see that this graph represent of moderate rate reaction that i just showed you Anna? so you start with the initial amount spent 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 but then you realize that you have to save the money and with the period so here from here to here you're saving money a lot you're not spending so the speed of the reaction is decreasing here it was very fast 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 slow 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 very slow so it is known as moderate rate reaction so we are going to focus on that part of where that kind of graphs clear okay now in the beginning you have maximum amount of a and over a period of time the concentration of a seems to be decreasing which is common sense which is understood also since a is a reactant and reactant should react reactant should react and its concentration should decrease you will also notice that the slope at every particular point is different slope is not the same slope here is this slope here is this slope here is this it's changing over the course of the reaction slope is changing now what is slope slope is dy by dx slope is dy by dx and what is there on the y-axis that's concentration that's time so can i say that dc by dt is my slope also now let's come back here so what is this graph representing this is representing that the concentration of a is decreasing over a period of time and if this is my reactant or, or the product sorry either of the two i am plotting c or d concentration of c seems to be increasing in the beginning the concentration of c is zero and over a period of time as b is used or a is used c will start increasing to avoid the complication we can just consider only a convert into c now make sense in the beginning we have just a which is undergoing a change to produce just one reactant that's c concentration of a at time t is equals to zero is the maximum concentration of c at time t is equals to zero is zero so the reaction has just begun the reaction has just started as a is decreasing b also c also increases so if you want to plot both of them on the same graph a will be decreasing and c will be increasing now this graphs you might have seen already in chemical equilibrium chapter there can be various types this can also be one of the graph this can also be one of the graph right so on the x-axis i am plotting time on the y-axis i am plotting temp time uh, or concentration so here i can say the con change in the concentration the change with at point of time after this time after this time the concentration of the reactant that's a and this is my c this is a this is c this is the graph for a this is the graph for c after this point of time the concentrations of a and c they are no more changing and what is that time called that time is called time equilibrium okay this time when the concentrations are no more changing what is this time going to be known as time equilibrium at this time the concentration of the two have become same remember the concentrations have now become the same concentration may or may not be same at equilibrium rate should be the same rate of backward and the forward direction should be the same now this is overall discussion of dc by dt and we are discussing over here that the concentration of a seems to be decreasing which is to be done which is for sure to be happen and concentration of product is increasing over a period of time understood everybody graphs clear and now what do we need to do here we need to understand that there are two kind of uh, uh, rate that we can calculate one is if you calculate if you calculate the rate i'll just insert a slide if you calculate um 
कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ द रिएक्टेंट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट दैट्स फाइनल माइनस कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ रिएक्टेंट इनिशियल डिवाइड बाय टेम्परेचर फाइनल माइनस टेम्प सॉरी टाइम टाइम नॉट टेम्परेचर टाइम फाइनल माइनस टाइम इनिशियल If you calculate these two over a huge range, over a decent range of time period, then it will be written as delta C by delta T. If the change in the time delta represent big change, big change or big difference, this change of concentration with respect to time will be known as this will be na named as average rate of a reaction. एवरेज रेट ऑफ रिएक्शन आई होप दिस रेड कलर इज विजिबल टू यू राइट गुड नाउ इफ यू डू द सेम बट दिस टाइम आई डू अ चेंज एट वन इंस्टेंट ऑफ टाइम दैट मीन्स द चेंज इन द टाइम द टू पॉइंट ऑफ द टाइम आर नॉट वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इच अदर देन इट इज नॉन एज इंस्टेंटेनियस इंस्टेंट एट दैट इंस्टेंट वट इज द रेट instantaneous rate of a reaction both of them represent rate but instant now this dt delta represent or d represent very small change generally small change okay now on the graph i can say if you measure if you measure the concentration one here at time equals to initial this is the initial time and then after some more time that's final time this is my t initial and at time final this is time initial this is time final okay this is my initial time time t initial this is my final time and here this concentration is noted this concentration at time initial will be initial concentration at this final time this will be the final concentration so do you notice that there is a huge change in the concentration there is a huge gap in the concentration huge gap and there is a huge gap in the time scale also so if you do that big range change and then calculate its rate that would be named as average rate of reaction but i want something else i want at that particular time instant what is the change so now the time window is very narrow time window is very narrow now if you calculate the difference in their concentration with respect to difference in the time will be known as instantaneous rate i instantaneous rate but do we study intent instantaneous rate in this chapter no we study average rate of the reaction understood there are two kind of rate now if a question comes to you in your board you can uh, easily explain with the help of these two kind of graphs if the change in the temp time window is a huge then it is average and if the time window is very narrow very very narrow then it becomes an instantaneous rate of reaction all right let's move to our rate of react general reaction how do we actually going to calculate suppose i have a reaction a of a reacting with b of b to produce c of c and d of d now what are these a b c d small a b c d is are the stoichiometric coefficient a b c d these are stoichiometric coefficient stoichiometric coefficient okay coefficient i hope you people are with me are you with me yeah okay now capital a b these are reactants these are called reactants and capital c comma capital d they are the products okay now if you want to write the rate of a reaction which i am going to use as a short form ror ror means rate of reaction rate of rx rx means reaction is equals to the change in the concentration of a divided by change in the time dt now since da by dt 
as the reactant i'm going to explain to you as the reactant concentration is decreasing over a period of time what do you expect da to be my question once again initially this is the concentration very high and finally this is the concentration that's low so low number less number final concentration minus initial concentration divided by final time minus initial time that will be equals to a negative value is that clear that will be equals to a negative value but can speed be negative can speed be negative no no not at all so rate of the reaction will, will be always a positive quantity always a positive quantity it will never ever be negative understood now da by dt since it is going to come out to be the negative for a reactant we need to place extra uh, minus over here now you understand what's the significance of using this minus is this clear everybody minus but if there is a stoichiometric coefficient also that will decide the extent of the reaction how much mole concept helps us in understanding if there is a uh, stoichiometric option one its extent of the reaction or its extent of a disappearance will be different if these stoichiometric options are different so what we need to do is to take care of the stoichiometric option one by a that should also be equals to minus one by b db by dt and that should be equals to 1 by c dc by dt now you can ask a question sir why are you not putting a minus over here because this is my product and for product final concentration will be always greater than its initial concentration because we are starting from initial concentration equals to zero of the product that will be equals to 1 by d d of d by dt is this general rate of reaction in terms of reactant and products clear everybody is this clear everybody yeah okay so let's discuss rate of the reaction that's minus da by dt for a this will be known as rate of disappearance disappearance of a that's my reactant let me write it in the bracket rate of disappearance of the reactant a minus db by dt will also be rate of disappearance of the reactant b understood okay dc by dt will be equals to rate of appearance rate of appearance because it is produced rate of appearance of c that's product that's my product similarly d of d divided by dt should be equals to rate of appearance of d that's one of the products is that clear everybody now in case of rate of disappearance or appearance you need not use stoichiometric option you should not use you must not use 1 by da minus 1 by a da by dt is the rate of the reaction not the rate of disappearance of a or b this is very common mistake done by the students very common mistake committed so what you should do in case of rate of reaction ror rate of reaction that should be equals to minus 1 by a da by dt that should be equals to minus 1 by b db by dt do you understand do you understand rate of the reaction is equals to 1 by a times the rate of disappearance of a rate of reaction is also equals to 1 by b times rate of disappearance of b rate of reaction is also equals to 1 by c times rate of appearance of c rate of appearance of c and rate of appearance of d 1 by d times rate of appearance of d concentration concentration now a b c d is here what do they represent concentration so a b c d when they are written with d so d a d b d c d t what do they represent change in the concentration change in the concentration change in concentration change in 
कॉन्सेंट्रेशन को ओके क्लियर एवरीबडी ओके नाउ वी नो दैट पीवी इज इक्वल टू एन आर टी एवरीबडी नोज दैट एवरीबडी नो दैट पीवी इज इक्वल टू एन आर टी सपोज आई एम प्रोवाइडेड विद वन गैसियस रिएक्शन होमोजीनियस बट गैसियस कैन ए से प्रेजर विल बी इक्वल टू एन बाई वी इन टू आर टी एंड वट इज एन इक्वल टू एन बाई वी दैट इज इक्वल टू सी आर टी सो पी प्रेजर इज इक्वल टू सी आर टी कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज इक्वल टू पी डिवाइड बाई आर टी इज दैट क्लियर एवरीबडी एन बाई वी इज द नंबर ऑफ मोल्स डिवाइड बाई वॉल्यूम दैट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कम्स आउट टू बी इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रेजर एंड आर एन टी इज इक्वल टू पी बाई आर टी नाउ स्टार्ट लेट स्टार्ट रिप्लेसिंग लेट स्टार्ट रिप्लेसिंग कॉन्सेंट्रेशन बाय द टर्म्स आर टी नाउ इफ ए वॉज कंसिडर एज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ ए दैट कैन बी रिप्लेस इक्वल टू प्रेजर ऑफ ए डिवाइड बाई आर टी मेक सेंस एवरीबडी सिमिलरली आई कैन राइट this db as p of b divided by rt similarly c can be written as p of c divided by rt and this d can also be written as pressure of d pressure of d divided by rt clear let's put that here now minus 1 by a since rt does not change r is fixed temperature i am maintaining constant it will be another 1 by rt did you follow that it will be a constant value so i can keep art and then change in the constant pressure of a divided by time will be also equals to minus 1 by brt into change in the pressure of b divided by change in temperature that should also be equals to 1 by crt into the change in the pressure of c divided by rt remember this small c represent stoichiometric coefficient that should also be equals to 1 by drt into the change in the pressure of d divided by change in change in time so this has to be change in time dt dt all right everybody now this equation this is the equation for rate of reaction in terms of pressure if the data is given to you of pressure you will be using this equation if the data is given to you of concentration you will be using these relations suppose they give you the number of moles instead so what are you going to do here since pv is equals to nrt and we have just discovered that n can be written in the terms of pv divided by rt pv divided by rt so number of moles can also be changed so now from here we can say that concentrations or pressure can be used in the terms of number of moles or not okay now concentration we know let me write over here concentration is equals to number of moles divided by volume let's let's replace concentration by number of moles of i am from here i am writing it will be equals to minus 1 by a making volume constant so 1 by av 1 by av change in the number of moles of a divided by dt do you understand this i have just replaced the concentration of a in terms of its own number of moles divided by volume of the vessel in which a b c d all four are present that should also be equals to 1 by b into the same volume of the container multiplied with d of change in the number of moles of b divided by change in time that should also be equals to 1 by c into v change in the number of moles of c divided by time change in time that should also be equals to 1 by d into v into change in the number of moles of d divided by dt is this also clear if the question tells you about the change in number of moles how many moles you had in the beginning how many moles of the reactant products you have at that particular time you can do that relation also now we know number of moles are also equals to weight divided by molar mass isn't it weight divided by molar mass now what i can do suppose the reaction says that this is the mass change this is the change in the mass so i am going to just replace the number of moles in terms of molecular mass remember molecular mass does not change so it will be minus 1 by av into molar into molar mass into molar mass okay 
and uh, with a minus sign here into change in the mass of a divided by dt similarly should be equals to 1 by b v into its molar mass let's write capital a here capital b here change in its mass d of mb divided by dt should also be equals to 1 by c into v uh, molar mass of c change in the mass of c divided by dt that should also be equals to 1 by d into volume into molar mass into c divide multiply d of change in the mol, uh, change in the mass of d divided by dt all right everybody is this clear now the first statement first relation if direct concentration changes are given to you second if the pressure change is also noticed if uh, number of moles of change are number of moles of uh, reactants and products are changing and if the data is about mass of the reaction of a and b and c similarly you can think of which to be used this is very 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 important hence i have spent good amount of time on this many kind of many times i have seen the question comes to you from this this uh, relations people just stick to the concentration and then get uh, they, they 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 get lost what to use if the pressure data is given to you what to be used when the number of moles data is given to you so remember these can be done let's proceed to the rate of the reaction taking as one of the example now what is the stoichiometric coefficient here one what is the stoichiometric coefficient here three what's the stoichiometric coefficient here two so the rate of reaction should be equals to minus one by one so the stoichiometric coefficient goes in the bottom change in the concentration i'm writing concentration as n2 divide by d2 the square bracket now represent concentration should be equals to minus 1 by 3 change in the concentration of h2 divided by dt that should be equals to 1 by 2 change in the concentration of ammonia divided by dt sir what about if pressure is given to you let's go back and see what do we need to do in pressure you need to have art so it will be equals to minus 1 by 1 into rt change in the pressure of change huh? d change in the pressure of n2 that should also be equals to minus 1 by 3 rt change in the pressure of h2 divided by dt and equals to plus 1 by 2 rt change in the pressure of ammonia divided by dt clear everybody likewise in the number of, in the terms of number of moles and in the terms of mass i am sure it is clear huh? keep on telling me on the comment box so that i uh, when i uh, watch this session and uh, come to know uh, if uh, everything has went well okay now the rate of the reaction relation we need to draw we just have done that question is here for example for a reaction 1 by 2a changes to 2b the rate of disappearance of a related to the rate of appearance of b by which of these which expression so rate of reaction will be equals to minus 1 by 1 by 2 is that point clear everybody minus 1 by 1 by 2 change in the concentration of a divided by dt should be equals to plus of 1 by 2 db by dt now that's your rate of disappearance inclusive of minus rate of disappearance of a and that's rate of appearance of b that will be equals to minus 2 da by dt is equals to 1 by 2 times db by dt this is one of the question asked in your boards as well as in neat now from here we can sort that da by dt or minus da by dt will be equals to 1 by 4 times db by dt or we can say rate of disappearance of a I'm repeating rate of disappearance of A is equals to 1 by 4 times rate of appearance of B. This will be the relation or rate of appearance of B is equals to 4 times rate of disappearance of A. Clear? Good? Nice.
Now, what are the factors which will affect the rate of a chemical reaction? That we need to know. The first one is definitely concentration. How does the concentration affect the rate of the reaction? If I take very huge concentration, will the reaction be slow or the fast reaction? That we need to comment on. We need to check that. Second one, the effect of temperature. How does that, how does temperature affect the rate of the reaction? Will it make it slow or fast? Sec uh, then the third point effect of nature of the reactant and the product if it is going to be solid solid reaction solid solid reactions are generally very slow reaction solid uh, liquid liquid reactions are pretty fast I mean uh, they are moderate rate reaction and gas gas reactions are going to be very fast reaction there will be immediate mixing of the two gases very nicely. Effect of the catalyst, catalyst can help us in increasing the rate of the reaction as well as decrease the rate of the reaction. The catalyst that helps us in increasing the rate of the reaction are known as positive catalyst. The catalyst which will help in reducing the rate of the reaction, those are known as negative catalyst. And then a factor of pressure. All these things we are going to now discuss. Let's pick up the rate of the reaction. At a given temperature, how is it going to uh, depend upon the concept at a given temperature the rate of the reaction at a given temperature depends upon the concentration of reactant very important very 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 important um, term it is so if it is import uh, directly proportional rate of reaction found to be experimentally directly proportional to the concentration of a concentration of a now what is a suppose a is the reactant and b is the product for the forward direction reaction, rate RF is found to be directly proportional to its cons its reactant. That's A here. And to remove the proportionality, we have to bring we have to bring proportionality constant. Let's say that's KF. And KF is known as rate constant for the forward direction reaction. Rate constant. Is this much clear? Now, the rate of the reaction for backward process will also be directly proportional to B. So, R of B will be directly proportional to the reactant for this reaction. That's B here. So, rate of backward is equals to KB into concentration of B. This is known as law of mass action that it depends upon its concentration. If you start with more concentration of A, uh, it's definitely reaction going to be affected but at constant temperature clear okay now let's say that the temperature how does the reaction is going to actually affecting the reaction or one more thing before we proceed these when our rate of the reaction is equals to kf times the concentration of the reactant concentration of reactant now, what is the power on that? Is it going to be always 1, 2, 3, 4, 10? How much? Suppose I have a reaction A of A reacts to produce, reacts with B of B to produce C of C and D of D. Generally, we take this reaction. Now, rate will be directly proportional to the concentration of A as well as concentration of B. There are two reactants and it will depend upon both of them. It will be power X and power Y. This X is known as, X is order of reaction. X is known as order of reaction. Everybody, are you listening? X is order of reaction, WRT, with respect to the reactant A, with re respect to A. Y is equals to order of the reaction with respect to B. Okay. Now this X and Y may or may not equals to A and B respectively. May or may not. May or may not equals to equals to A and B respectively. They may or may not be the same. That's not guaranteed. That's not required. Okay. Now I can say that if X is equals to A and if Y is equals to B, then this reaction will be known as elementary reaction. Elementary reaction. Now you are known to the fact that if 
the stoichiometric coefficients become equal to the order of the reaction with respect to those re reactant and then the reaction will be known as elementary reaction if x is not equal to a y is not equal to b then it is known as a complex reaction then it's a complex reaction so for elementary reaction stoichiometric coefficient sc in general is equals to order and for complex reaction stoichiometric coefficients are not equals to order of the reaction with respect to the reactant 1 and reactant 2 clear everybody this x plus y together x plus y together they are known as overall 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 order of the reaction overall order overall order of the reaction overall order clear everybody x and x plus y will be overall order of the reaction now order is a very beautiful thing it's a, a experimental property order is an experimental property and it can be positive it can be negative it can be fraction so let's just discuss these features of order first various features of order point number one can be positive can be negative can be fraction can be positive can be negative can be a fraction value can be zero as well then second property it's an experimental value it's an experimental value order equals to zero order of reaction equals to zero represent a complex very very complex reaction complex reaction which will be associated with various mechanisms so it will it will have a mechanism associated with it mechanism mechanism means multi step mechanism associated with it okay everybody can you calculate order of a reaction theoretically no it's an experimental value now i have brought to you a question that two of ozone produces 3 of O2. This experimental rate of this expression of this equation is found to be R equals to K times O3 power 2 and O2 power minus 1. What is the order with respect to O2 and O2 and overall rate of overall order of the reaction? With respect to O3, order is equals to 2. This power, this power and with respect to O2, the order is equals to order is equals to minus 1. Overall order, beta. Overall order of the reaction is equals to the summation of the two values. 2 minus 1 is equals to 1 is the answer. Now you might be seeing that since there is no O2 in this reactant side. Therefore, any reaction which has 0 or fractional order or some weird order value that means it's an experimental value it need not to be just the reactant which is present in this overall reaction it will have a mechanism associated with it and the order of the reaction is dependent upon the reactants in rds i'm sure you know what is rds write down in the comment box everybody what is rds rds rate determining step rate determining step is going to be the slowest step of the reaction is the slowest step of a reaction suppose in a mechanism there are various steps going on and in those various steps one of it will be the slowest in nature that reaction step will help us in writing the order of the reaction and every reactant that is involved in it will represent the rate of the reaction will represent overall order of the reaction is everything clear about the order with respect to reactants as well as the overall it is an experimental value can be positive negative as well as fraction and zero also 
Now we know the rate of the constant depends upon the temperature only, not on the concentration. Sir, we just learned that it depends upon the concentration. No, that was rate of the reaction. But here what it is? Rate constant that depends upon just the temperature. So R is equals to K times the concentration of A power X and B power Y. So it means that this rate constant is a function of temperature. Rate constant is function of temperature remember rate constant can be changed when temperature changes and so far i am not telling you will the temperature increment make the rate of re, uh, rate constant go up or low less or high will it increase or decrease that we are going to learn in a moment that will be learned in a moment that as the temperature increases what happens to rate of uh, rate constant value okay now, before we proceed, I want you to figure out what will be the unit of K, unit of rate constant. Now, we know that rate was equals to change in the concentration of a reactant divided by, divided by the time. And we know concentration also. We know concentration. Concentration is, concentration is mol per liter. Hmm? For time being, let's say molarity, mol per liter divide by time we can take it as second so rate ka unit will be equals to mol per liter per second that's fixed forever this will be the unit of rate unit of rate it is but rate can also be written as rate is also written as rate is equals to minus da by dt there was one by dt here one by dt that is also equals to k times the concentration of A. Let's say I have just very simple equation. A goes to B. A of A changes to B. For that we can write rate of reaction equals to minus 1 by A dA by dt equals to rate constant times the concentration of A with the power x. That's not A. May or may not be equals to the stoichiometric coefficient. Now, since R is equals to K into concentration power X, what will be the value or what will be the unit of the rate constant? We know the rate ka, rate ka unit is mol per liter per second. That should be equals to K. We know the concentration once again, that's mol per liter, mol per liter. Concentration everybody, mol per liter power X. From here, K ka unit will be equals to mol per liter power 1 into second inverse divide by mol per liter power x. Check please. I have just took this right hand side equation on the denominator of the left hand side. Now k ka unit will be finally will be equals to mol per liter power 1 minus overall order order of the reaction per second this becomes the unit this becomes the unit of rate constant fixed units unit of one particular reaction will be fixed all right let's proceed now i have brought to you the units since i have said that the k ka unit will be equals to mole per liter one minus the order per second if order is equals to 0, when order is equals to 0, this value will be 0. So, it will be just mole per liter per second. Do you see that everybody? Understood? Do you need to remember this now? No, not at all. You can derive it in the examination. And when order is equals to 1, when order is equals to 1, then 1 minus 1 will be 0. So, k ka unit will be just equals to per second. Make sense? Check this please. In your given, in your questions, the question data will not mention to you whether the reaction is first order or second order or nth order or zeroth order. From the units of K, you need to guess. You need to make sure that it is first or second or zeroth order reaction. Similarly, for second order, 1 minus 2 will be minus 1. So, K ka unit will be per mole liter per second. Per mole liter per second. Understood, everybody? Shall we move to the next part? Okay. Now, let's start with our integrated rate law, most important part of this chapter. Let's start doing some mathematics, very simple mathematics. Suppose I have a reaction 
a to b and a changes to b and the rate is going to be equals to k times concentration of a with the power if it is zeroth order i am discussing zeroth order reaction so the power on a the concentration of a what is what should be the power here zero do you understand that and rate can also be written as minus da by dt change in the concentration of a should be equals to k power of a a power zero will be one let's rearrange things minus da will be equals to k times dt now let's do some integration so da will be equals to minus k and dt i have to integrate it from the start concentration let's say that's a naught and final concentration let's say that's at and start time that's zero and final time let's say t do you understand these integration limits okay now from here i can go and say da becomes a and the limits are a naught to at that is equals to minus k this becomes t limits are from 0 to t clear everybody okay now we need to write at final minus initial a naught equals to minus k t minus k 0 this becomes my first 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 ever integrated rate law equation for the zeroth order now what is at at is the concentration of a left after time t at is the concentration concentration of a left that's the reactant left after time t left after time t make sure that you do not make any mistake over here what is a naught a naught is initial concentration initial concentration of a initial concentration of a the reactant clear everybody a naught and a t this becomes my final 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 expression and once you know that a t minus a naught is equals to minus of k t we can further simplify this can you view this as if it is a straight line equation y is equals to mx plus c yes we will draw that also let us first look at this particular graph which says rate versus concentration as the concentration is changing 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 i start with the very low concentration i start with the very high concentration very high very high very high very high concentration is the rate changing no what does it mean this is independent of the concentration of the reactant because the power is zero the order of the reaction is zero so always a flat line parallel to the x-axis that represent zeroth order graph you should be very much comfortable in figuring out you're discussing the graphs also now as i said at minus a naught was equals to minus of kt i can view at equals to a naught minus kt now y can be drawn the concentration can be drawn and on the y axis this is my cons this is my uh, constant c this becomes a plus of this is minus mx plus mx correct everybody now i want to plot time on the x axis so y and this is my x axis on the x axis i want to plot time and time cannot be negative and on the y-axis, I want to plot concentration that also cannot be negative. So what does it mean? My graph will start from a very high value. Obviously, when the time equals to zero, when the time is zero, the concentration of A will be the highest. And what will that value be? It will be A naught. And after the time, pro as the time progresses, the concentration will start dropping and follow a linear progression. This becomes a straight line equation. This has a slope equals to M is equals to slope. That's minus K value. This is the slope minus k value. Look at here, everybody. This represents zeroth order graph and rate as I have already discussed it with you. Since the rate is equals to rate constant power a zero power zero and power zero makes it one. So rate is always equals to constant value. That's k value constant. So if a graph is given to you, they ask you what is this value? That's the rate constant itself. Rate constant. That's the rate constant. So rate will be equal to rate constant because there is no concentration term at all. Understood? Zeroth order clear everybody? Okay. Now have 
the graph that we have discussed now when what do you understand by the term t half t half means the time time at which 50 percentage of the reactant is 50 percentage of the reactant is reacted or left reacted or left okay so if i start with the concentration a naught can i say after one t half the concentration will be now half of it am i making sense this concentration terms when you put that here now after time t half what is the concentration a naught by 2 i'm repeating 80 after half time after t half what is the concentration a naught by 2 if you put that in this equation of 80 equals to a naught minus kt 80 is how much a naught divided by 2 check please check 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 that is equals to a naught minus k what's the time t half so from here if you rearrange you'll figure out that t half comes out to be equals to a naught divided by 2k a naught divided by 2k do you see that the t half is dependent upon the concentration and it is directly proportional if i take a large amount of a uh, component a the reactant a the t half will also be large value if I take small amount of A0, the T half will also be small value. So it is a straight line equation, T half versus the concentration. T half versus the concentration. Starting from time, concentration 0, there will be absolutely no T half. Making the concentration this much, that represents the T half value here. Increasing the concentration, increasing the T half value also. Now one more point I would like to add over here let's start studying the reaction at this particular instant and i want to study another half so if this is the initial concentration after t half what should be the concentration left half and then further half it becomes zero when the final concentration becomes zero when the final concentration becomes zero i want you to do this concentration final concentration is zero now of reactant final concentration becomes zero so what is this another time period i am telling you this will take another half life to become zero another half life to become zero so let's do that exercise also let's do that exercise also time t completion uh, at time t is equals to t is equals to 100 percentage time equals to when 80 is equals to a naught do you follow this what i'm saying 80 becomes equals to a naught that means 100 percentage 100 percentage a is converted 100 percentage conversion irreversible reaction 100 percentage conversion okay now 80 equals to a naught minus kt the time when 80 becomes a naught 80 becomes a naught or i can say the final concentration or 80 means final concentration how much it is zero right uh, the concentration of a left 100 percent conversion when the concentration 80 becomes zero so zero is equals to a naught minus k for 100 percent completion kt will be equals to a naught it becomes a naught and then time for 100% conversion will be equals to a naught divided by k remember remember a naught divided by k time for completion of the reaction and that is double that is the double time so t 100% conversion is equals to 2 times t half this relation is very 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 important so t for 100% completion is 2 times the t half do you see that relation if i multiply t half by 2 it becomes 2 times t half equals to 100% time for 100% completion is equals to a naught by k okay now we have first order reaction suppose i have a react a reaction for a changing to b now rate will be equals to minus da by dt should also be equals to rate constant a power 1 now let's start dealing with this two 
equalities da by dt i am going to rearrange it becomes equals to minus k times dt now let's integrate both the sides since k is constant it will come out of the integration da by a has an integration ln of a log base e equals to minus k times t let's have the concentration a naught to a and time from 0 to t what do you get from here ln of a minus ln of a naught equals to minus kt ln of a minus a naught equals to kt if i want to change ln to log what do we need to do we need to have additional 2.303 factor so i can write log of a minus log of a naught which is equals to minus k t divided by 2.303 this becomes another equation and that i have plotted here for you because this is my y-axis log of y is on the y-axis log of a is on the y-axis and time is plotted here so what will be the slope guys slope will be equals to minus k divided by 2.303 generally we convert log of e that is ln to log base 10 because it is easier for us to solve logarithm compare it to natural logarithm this equation also must be very much clear to you because ln of a equals to ln of a divided by a naught equals to minus of kt now i can say a is equals to a naught times e raised to the power minus kt a was at here this was at here this equation is also very 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 important we can draw it from here a naught by a equals to kt or we can say at is equals to a naught times e raised to the power minus kt we have drawn it from here so ln of at divided by a naught equals to minus kt so at divided by a naught will be e raised to the power minus kt at will be equals to a naught power a naught into e raised to the power minus kt this number will be always less than one which is multiplied with a naught so the so that the final concentration is always less than the initial concentration very 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 important relation here can we say that at is equals to the reactant amount left after time t okay amount time t this was your first order equation and then a versus time t this represents exponential decay exponential decay since the uh, the amount of a is changing exponential decay and the graph is a time t equals to a naught e raised to the power minus kt this is the graph clear everybody at the beginning time what is the concentration that's a naught when time t is equals to zero put it zero here a power zero that becomes one so a t a naught equals to this whole number the concentration of a t becomes a naught so in the beginning how much is the concentration left it is the same amount that you have started with that's a naught with respect to time as the time is progressing come amount of a is also decreasing so these are the two very important graphs representing the change in the time this is final expression i have just discussed with you ln of concentration a in the beginning divided by at will be equals to kt or ln of at divided by a naught will be equals to minus kt from here we can derive a naught concentration will be equals to at into power kt and from here we can say concentration at will be equals to a naught e raised to the power minus kt clear everybody now there is something called t half again the time after which 50 percent of the reactant is left or 50 percent is reacted that makes the same sense now this becomes when concentration at is equals to a naught by 2 what is that time at at t half at t half concentration at is equals to a naught by 2 and then you finally derived t half comes out to be equals to ln of 2 divided by k and ln of 3 sorry this comes out to be equals to 0 0.693 divided by k and do you see any concentration term here in this expression no 
if this is independent of the concentration so t half graph with respect to concentration should be a flat line should be a flat line it's no more going to change you have whatever amount in the beginning the rate will be t half will be independent of the concentration taken initial concentration taken all right this was very important another important point that you should use when at becomes equals to e that is known as average rate so average rate of the reaction is equals to t average is equals to just 1 by k and we will be using this equation or you might have used this equation in nuclear chemistry for every radioactive decay the t average is calculated that's 1 by k where k is the rate constant so what will be the value what will be the unit of t average that's second what will be the unit of k for first order reaction that's second inverse all right let's proceed to the next part these are the few examples that i have brought to you and trust me there will be absolutely no other example that can come to you for first order rate of the reaction these are the maximum that are reported in your syllabus the first one is decomposition of h2o2 when it decomposes it produces water and oxygen you might have studied this reaction in redox chapter also and to calculate percentage strength in your uh, mole concept chapter h2o2 is peroxide have very uh, immense use in organic chemistry also radioactive decays all of these are following they all follow first order reaction decomposition of n2o2 also nitrogen pentoxide will also follow first order decomposition of so2cl2 will also follow so it will produce so2 and cl2 gas that follows first order reaction dehydrohalogenation reaction of ethyl chloride suppose i start with ch3 ch2 ch3 ch2 cl ch3 ch2 cl when you remove hydrogen and chlorine it forms ethene ch2 double bond ch2 plus hcl comes out this also follows first order kinetics ester hydrolysis again first order hydro first order kinetics r c double bond o o r in the presence of h plus and some water it follows first order kinetics you get acid and an alcohol and an alcohol let's say this is r dash let's say this is r dash this is the reaction that is followed inversion of cane sugar also you start from sucrose when you add acid and do its hydrolysis you will obtain fructose and glucose that kind of uh, inversion of cane sugar is also going to follow first order kinetics remember these seven examples and trust me there will be no other example in your examin examination okay now for nth order i just suggest you to remember its a final expression that's kt equals to 1 by 1 by n minus 1 divide uh, in the bracket you have 1 by a power so let me explain it to you once kt will be equals to 1 divided by n minus 1 multiplied with 1 by at power the concentration of the reactant after time t power n minus 1 is equals to okay minus minus 1 by a naught power n minus 1 where n is the order of the reaction similarly we can say that t half for nth order reaction is 1 by k into n minus 1 into 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus 1 divide by a naught power n minus 1 where n is the order of the reaction these two relations are valid only n is not equals to 1 for all but not for n is equals to 1 not valid for first order not valid for first order reaction for first order remember for first order it is not valid for zeroth order for second order you can definitely do that from here can we say that t half is directly proportional to 1 by a naught power 1 by a naught power n minus 1 1 by a naught power n minus 1 remember this will be useful you can try that if n is equals to 0 then t half comes out to be directly proportional to a naught and that we have discussed already if n is equals to 1 here t half will be useful for any order reaction if n is equals to 1 then t half becomes independent of a naught and if n is equals to 2 then t half becomes inversely proportional to the initial concentration 
क्लियर एवरीबडी आगे चले ओके Now there are some methods to monitor the progress of a reaction. How do we do that? There are first one the concentration measurement, pressure measurement, volume measurement, temperature measurement, uh, tem titration method. These all depends upon the circumstances that we have if, given. The, I will just discuss one which is uh, with respect to pressure. And usually your board people ask this question only on the basis of pressure. Rarely they ask on the other one. So what does this reaction say? It says the following data were obtained during the first order thermal decomposition of N2O5 at a given constant volume. So as I have discussed, thermal decomposition of N2O2 is going to follow first order and your examination question also had mentioned it is first order kinetics. As we know the first order kinetics, we can always use the direct equation. But here, the pressure things are given to you. The values of the pressures are given to you. So how are we going to deal with this question? Let's rewrite the equation first. N2O5. What is the stoichiometric option? 2. It dissociates to produce 2 of N2O4 and 1 mole of O2. At time t is equals to 0, just follow my way. You will be able to solve this question. At time t is equals to 0, what is the total pressure? 0 0.5. Let's say the initial pressure that I had was A. I'm just using the symbol A. Or oh, let's use symbol P. I have initial pressure P. Will there be N2O4 and O2 present at time t is equals to 0? No, nil. After time is equals to 100, let's say some amount of, some amount of P has reacted. Some amount of the reactant has reacted. And how much? Let's say X. X is the amount that is reacted. So, same amount of N2, same amount of N2O4 should be formed, right? Same pressure because the stoichiometric coefficient is 2, 2. Do you see that? I assume that initial pressure is P and after some time 2x because there is a stoichiometric coefficient 2. So, multiplied with x. So, 2x is used and 2x will also be formed. And how much of O2 will be formed? Tell me in the comment box. How much of the O2 should be there? X. Clear. Okay, now at that point of time, can you can you tell me the total pressure? P T where temperature if time is 100 should be equals to P minus 2x plus 2x and plus x. So overall P plus x. And what's the value given to you? 0 0.512. And what was the original P value? What was the original P value? What is the original P value, everybody? Original P is 0 0.5. So let's put down the value here. 0 0.512. X will be equals to, let's use P equals to 0 0.5. 0 0.012. 0 0.012. Do you understand X value? Okay. Now, what is the concentration or the pressure of, or the pressure of the reactant that you are left with? P minus 2x. So from here, let's calculate P minus 2 times 0 0.012 or 0 0.5 minus 2 times 0 0.012. This is the pressure at time t. Pressure at time t of what? Of N2O5. Of N2O5. This is the pressure of N2O5. And in the beginning, Pressure at zero time was how much? Will was 0 0.5. Now let's use our first order kinetics equation. That is logarithm of A0 divided by AT is equals to KT. Now put down the value. Logarithm of 0 0.5 divided by this value 0 0.5 minus 2 times 0 0.012 is equals to kt. Just solve this equation, you will get the desired results. Do you follow that everybody? Did you follow how I solved this question? In the beginning, I said that what is the pressure given to you? That's 0 0.5. And after some time, the total pressure is given to you. So why are you considering the, all the three things here? Because this is also gas, this is also gas, and that's also gas. I need to see how much contribution comes from all of these. But what do we need? Just the contribution of the reactant. So A divided by A0 is required. A0 is already known to me is 0 0.5. After point, after 100 second, after 100 second, what is the pressure of A? That's P minus 2x. Just take a ratio, equate it with the KT. You will get the time. 
time is 100 and k value you can easily calculate this is a max difficulty question from this chapter the board people can ask you now comes the temperature coefficient thing we have we have studied that rate constant is is a function of temperature rate constant is a function of temperature and it was experimentally figured out that if you increase the temperature k also increases if you increase the temperature k also increases now it was found that for a general reaction if temperature is originally t and you increase the temperature by 10 degrees celsius and you take the ratio you take the ratio with its t wall t degree celsius you calculate the k and take its ratio it comes out to be almost two to three times what am i saying here calculate the rate constant at temperature t degree celsius and now you increase the temperature by 10 degree celsius take a ratio it comes out in the range of 2 to 3 in the range of 2 to 3 this is known as temperature coefficient this is known as temperature coefficient and there is this relation which we are going to just now see k2 which is a a new rate constant value at temperature t2 divided by k1 rate constant at temperature t1 is equals to the temperature coefficient tc power change in the temperature divided by 10 this relation i want you to know very well suppose you have a tc value uh, temperature coefficient 2 to 3 you change this temperature not by 10 maybe by 20 30 40 50 degrees you just put that number here delta t divided by 10 that becomes the power of the temperature coefficient will be the ratio of k2 by k1 but the problem you know what happened this uh, was a very uh, hand waving idea is it was not a good idea to say what will be the exact point exact value here then comes a relation known as arrhenius equation arrhenius equation this arrhenius equation says that the temperature coefficient should be equals to a into e raised to the power minus ea by rt where ea is the activation energy of the reaction activation energy every reaction requires some lump sum amount of energy to get activated activated activation amount of energy activation energy okay where r is the gas constant t is the temperature at which the reaction being carried out and a is equals to arrhenius a is equals to arrhenius frequency factor or arrhenius factor arrhenius factor okay but this equation was found to be uh, not a very well proof for uh, the temperature coefficient result also so what do we need to know, know in this particular uh, re relation of arrhenius equation that k is equals to a into e raised to the power minus ea by rt as i said a reaction has to a reaction will only proceed if all the molecules are having some le least amount of energy that is required least amount of energy required will be the uh, threshold energy suppose i have a reaction to be done reaction to be done and that's starting from the reactant here and it is going to this direction so this is the least amount of energy this is called threshold energy threshold energy threshold energy least amount of energy reactant must possess to to do this reaction and the difference between these two this value this value from here to here means it is activation energy if the reactants do not possess this much amount of activation energy they will not do the reaction they will not do any sort of conversion so what uh, arrhenius equation suggests that then comes boltzmann distribution curve at temperature t1 if you try to figure out how many molecules are actually having the energy greater than or equals to activation energy they fall into this region but when you increase the temperature, the, your thermal energy is increasing. The molecules will start possessing more energy. Their thermal energy increases, their kinetic energy increases, and eventually their ag activation energy also increases. And generally at a higher temperature, most of the reaction, generally, most of the reaction, they speed up. 
So because the number of the molecules, this area will show how much temp how many molecules are there. So do you see that earlier I had only these many? Ar earlier I had only these many particles present here, which would possessing, which were possessing activation amount of energy, activation energy. But after I increase, after I increase the temperature, the number of the particles having activation energy or more than that, they are more now. So the temperature increment speed up the reaction because the particles will have more activation energy and that uh, fairly explains why K increases with increase in temperature. Is this thing clear everybody according to Arrhenius concept? Okay. Then we need to understand how this equation can be plotted in various ways. So K ka I can plot uh, uh, ln on both the sides. So ln of K becomes equals to ln of A minus Ea by rt where ea is activation energy ea by rt now i can plot k here on this y axis ln of k on the y axis and i can plot 1 by temperature on the x axis 1 by temperature so this becomes my y equals to c and plus mx where m is equals to minus e a by r minus e a by r this will be the graph so what is the slope everybody slope will be minus e a by r check please this is the graph minus e a by r so they might give you uh, a graph and ask you to calculate activation energy on the basis of e a on the basis of activation energy clear okay if they ask you to do some temperature comparison of the uh, rate constants also so we can write k2 is equals to a frequency factor does not change energy activation energy also does not change remember i am writing only k2 and t1 this relation will will be keep on uh, keep on uh, uh, varying if temperature changes if temperature changes a will not change and activation energy will also not change. Now, when I do K2 minus K1, we shall be able to figure out what will be the relation between the two. Frequency factor or Arrhenius factor, that should, that should cancel each other. So, log of K2 will be equals to, log of K2 should be equals to 2.303 or first of all, log of K, log of A, minus 2.303 log of Ea by Rt. Ea by Rt. Correct? So, Ln, okay, this will be just Ea by Rt. Just Ea by Rt. Ea by Rt. What temperature? T2. Similarly, log, I am applying Ln on both the sides, which is converted to log later 2.303 as i said ea does not change as i said ea does not change so 2.303 ea divided by r t1 now subtract equation number subtract equation number 2 from equation number 1 or subtract equation number 1 from equation number 2 so let's say equation number 2 minus 1 will result into this equation ln of k2 log of k2 divided by k1 log a log a they will cancel each other and that should be equals to that should be equals to minus 2.303 that should be in the denominator let me fix this that should be in the denominator so minus 1 by 2.303 ea by r t2 minus 1.3 2.303 Ea divided by R T1. All right, everybody. Now it is the final expression 1 by T1 minus 1 by T2. Okay. So finally, we see that there are various factors which affect the rate of the reaction. One is called the frequency factor. The other one is called the how much fraction of the particles are having energy greater than activation amount of energy. This can be controlled by the temperature. If temperature increases, the number of particles having that in, uh, part, number of particles having that higher or equal amount of activation energy will also increase. But what about the frequency factor? Will it result into the proper collision, proper frequency? Will every particle having activation energy greater than have, having energy greater than activation energy will participate in the reaction? That becomes a question. So then we have to see that 
not every reaction will result into proper result there will be three factors one is called collision frequency activation energy and orientation factor arrhenius equation takes care of the arrhenius equation takes care of activation energy and does not speak much about collision frequency and finally the orientation factor so rate has to be rewritten like z of ab ab are the two reactants multiplied with the new e power ea by rt this becomes my final equation instead of a we are replacing a by z of ab what is z here z is a combination of collision frequency and orientation factor that is representing that the orientation factor has to be included therefore rate is equals to now finally z of ab which is frequency factor but out of that collisions how many collisions are really resulting into proper reaction depending upon the two things whether they have proper energy or not plus if they have proper orientation or not for example on a pool table i want to pocket one ball how much uh, on what particular angle i should use my stick to hit the ball so that it get pocketed that is the same thing if two molecules are of the two atoms are hitting each other the impact should be good to result into a product that has to be multiplied with the probability factor or the orientation factor into e raised to the power minus ea by rt now this takes care of the entire parameters starting from the probability factor that's orientation factor orientation plus the frequency factor with the energy parameter also this becomes my final 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 equation to understand the rate of the reaction there are few ways to find out the order of the reaction since order is an experimental property we have initial method initial rate method you can find out the initial rate initial concentration can be changed and see how the rate is eventually changing and then various other methods let's discuss one of that which is very important for your exam point of view suppose we do three set of experiments or four experiments keeping the concentrations of one at least fixed in two experiments so concentration of b is kept constant over here concentration of a is made doubled over here what is happening to the initial rate initial rate is becoming four times so if r is equals to k times the concentration of a into concentration of b since this reaction suggests that there are two reactants i do not know what is this value x what is this value y and if initial rate is equals to 2.002 and the final rate has become 0.008 what's the relation between the two four times four times and what am i doing to the concentration of a i'm making it two times so the newer concentration of a is two times the concentration of a power and then power y of b we know that the rate which is equals to k times now these two rates are known to me 0 0.002 0 0.008 when you take a ratio what do you get 4 equals to 2 power x which represent x has to be 2 x is equals to 2 now to figure out what happens to y what is the relation to the y now let's figure out when a is kept constant if a is kept constant and b is doubled what is happening to the concept what is happening to the rate with respect to change in the concentration of b it's not changing which means that which means that it is independent y value is equals to zero y value is equals to zero let's verify that once again i increase the concentration to three times so two raised to the power three should becomes eight so and the concentration of b is also increased from 0 0.5 to 1.5 so what is happening to here so three times and three power two is nine nine into two is 18 so this becomes 18 time again proves that the concentration of b is not affecting overall rate of the reaction depends upon the concentration of a and it is independent of the concentration of b that's all for today's session everybody i know this was a long session but uh, this has covered entire chemical kinetics for you you need not watch anything else you need not read from anywhere else you just have to take your ncrt and this lecture side by side and every single thing is covered i hope this lecture will be, will be helpful for your board examination i'll see you in the next class guys this is your teacher dr lakshya kathuria goodbye till then take care